Calligraphy, a celebration in the art of the written word. This program will look at today's calligraphic trends and demonstrate what it takes to get started in learning this exciting art form. What is contemporary calligraphy and how can you learn more about this exciting art form? Calligraphy is a subject that can sound a bit boring, yet today this art form is one of the most innovative and exciting areas of fine art. This is definitely not the historic art form people remember. Letter forms, the term calligraphers use to describe their work for writing, are going in unique and exciting directions. You may think of alphabets such as copper plate, Carolingian, or italics. However, if you do that, you'll miss out on what's going on. It's not that learning the basics isn't important. It's about thinking beyond the box, or paper in this case. What has changed is that almost anything goes today. Each year, the top calligraphic and creative artists from around the world get together to share new ideas and techniques. This conference allows calligraphers to celebrate their art form. In July 2003, they gathered in Ohio, just north of Columbus, in the quaint town of Delaware. The local university hosted the event and transformed the campus into an art workshop The demonstrations and exhibits challenged the participants to try new ideas. This conference allows calligraphers to celebrate and share their art form. The subjects vary from learning more traditional letter forms to the blending of fine art styles. We have typography. Ever since the 15th century, calligraphy can never be the same again. It's the same for other art forms like painting, for example, since photography came along. Um, so art is one obvious application. You know, the idea of communication of the spirit through the medium of letters. The instructors challenged the participants to develop their own unique style. The things that I encourage the students to do in my class more than anything else is to be um, is to not copy my work or not to copy anybody else's work, but to um, really bring out what's inside of them. Uh, and every student has unique qualities that are just theirs, as opposed to um, you know the teacher or anybody else. So I try to bring those out in each of the students. So that's sort of my bent as a teacher to do that and to get them excited about that, that they can see forms and shapes on their paper that they don't see on any, in anybody else's work or on anybody else's paper. So that's what I try to give them, sort of um, that excitement that they've created something very unique that just comes out of their hand. Randall Hassan, a teacher at the conference, is an innovative artist from Solana Beach, California, where he has a gallery. The techniques he uses in his work incorporate calligraphy and illustration into large paintings on canvas. My goal in doing these paintings was to have an image where somebody could sit across the room and look at the painting and, and see a pretty picture and never ha or something that means something to them and never have to read a word in order for it to mean something to them. Um, and, and then there are, there's larger text that they can read across the room that's more of an impact, but then as different levels come in, some people want to really go up and read the words that are hard to read and, and figure out why they're there and figure out maybe some of the compositional elements. So, so the paintings that I'm doing maybe have four or five different elements to them for that reason so that people can go as deep as they want to go. Hassan's class, Text and Texture, Calligraphy on Artist Canvas, is a good example of the excitement generated by blending styles. He's going to be important, and that's an arresting image. This, stop, this will stop people because he's looking right at you. Yeah. So I would say you want, to, you want to feature him. This is the element that you want to feature. And 
And so I would, I would make that a bigger element, and plus it's just gonna be beautiful when it's painted. Dennis Brown's experimental gilding incorporates letter form and layout as part of the overall course. And you've also the choice of whether to go for something fairly traditional in terms of lettering or whether to even go for something layered in terms of the letter. Brown places a strong emphasis on graphic design. Basically I think calligraphy is a design process and there are many other design processes and because of the lack of educational uh, opportunities in calligraphy I think it would be healthy for more calligraphers to really get a good design background and then come back to their calligraphy with that under their belt. Sheila Waters is a renowned calligrapher and teacher. Waters students learn the basics of color in color using the double primary palette, a critical foundation for use in any art form. Always start with your lighter color that you've mixed. It means that in every case you have to mix the color you start with, but you don't mix the color you're going to. But you do your gradation in the same way as you did the others. Only mix up very little of the starting color. You don't need very much. And have lots more of the finishing color because you've, you've learned by experience now that you need a lot of the color you're going to. You can see individual styles develop and the pen is the tool that makes it possible. A good example of creative flexibility gained using hand and pen manipulation is demonstrated by Carl Roars. So, see what happens oh, that's there? that's nice, yeah. So, you can see where the, the leading edge of the pen stopped and mm -hmm. the trailing edge continued, but then that, that shape, see that, that word mm -hmm. shape? I didn't control that, it just happened, you know, that that's where the, the ink curtain drawing across the front of the pen decided to let go a little more dramatically mm -hmm. right at that spot. But since you can't predict it, it really is exciting to see what you yeah. end up getting. Roar students are experiencing everything and the sink. The focus is on various styles and techniques each tool can make. Instructor Georgia Deaver sees her students developing their own unique letter forms even in the short time they're together. The class I'm teaching right now is only two and a half days, but in that amount of time, I do see um, special things in each student, and I try to point them out to them so that they don't forget them. Even though we're not together for like a whole week, um, they can still remember those things and bring those things out in the whole rest of the year. Deaver's class on brush lettering gives students a flexible tool to create a wide variety of art. I want you to do some of your writing condensed and I want you to spread some of it out. As the participants gradually develop skills they create their own variation or style of art. And oftentimes when people begin doing calligraphy you will hear them say well I'm, I want to develop my own style but my feeling is you cannot develop your own style. It happens. It happens by you doing the work, the historical forms, and learning the steps. And then it just, you don't have to try to develop your own style. It, it happens. I think the master calligrapher, no matter what script he does, it will be his style. He makes it his own. It will be identifiable, whether it's a gothic letter or an italic or whatever. The excitement and energy of this gathering is seen in the admiration the calligraphers have for each other's art. The faculty artwork unveiling is the main event of the first evening. Three, two, one. The excitement generated at these conferences helps keep the art form vital and stimulating. It's always exciting to come to conferences like this because it's my peers and it's the people that I see once a year in, and it's very exciting to see what everybody's been doing. Today, calligraphy is more likely to be seen hanging on gallery walls than in books. Historically, calligraphy is generally associated with scribes agonizing for long hours creating beautiful books, such as Bibles or devotional prayer books. Since the renaissance of calligraphy in the last century, this has changed. Much of the art produced today is created to hang in galleries, homes, or offices. Calligraphers each find their own mark, a very individual form of expression. 
Today, calligraphy is headed in this direction, away from the traditional letter forms. In this century, people are looking at things as more as art, where it seems to be have a place now where it didn't really, I mean, there wasn't a matter of what are you hanging in your walls? It was something that would be functional, like a Bible or a book to read, whatever it might be in scholarly ways. I see a trend toward the artistic. I see a lot of artistic movement. Many people are very talented in drawing, and they are combining calligraphy with drawings, which makes it way more interesting if you have a talent along that way. And also I've seen a lot of people using beautiful backgrounds, which adds interest to it, you know, when you use a beautiful watercolor background. So I hope that more people will become appreciative and want calligraphy in their homes. So when we have a market and people purchase it, then we know calligraphy will be in good hands. There's a lot of room for a lot of different types of calligraphy and how much people look at things and don't understand how much the words are a part of what they're looking at, but that's what draws them to it. I think what we're seeing now is another whole branch in calligraphy who's saying, well, maybe reading the copy is not all that important. Maybe the texture is more important than the readability. Uh, other people who are saying, well, you know, now maybe we need to fade the copy and allow some of the fine art to come out. This program has shown only a small part of the influences of calligraphy. Calligraphers are constantly innovating to create memorable art that inspires the world. With your individual style and letter forms you create, you can leave your mark on your world.